wide enough to fit the front of the house, like that. Oh, look, it does. It'll curve it to it. Nice. Aha. Okay, I like this. I like this a lot. Welcome, everybody. Drake Hawkins with you. And today we're going to be starting a mini series on the beta demo version of Manor Lords. Uh, the dev has uh, brought this out for all of us to try during Next Fest this uh, month. It is, I guess, the time of recording this is the beginning of October 2022. So uh, if you're catching this later, there's probably more content of this on the channel. So look for that. Uh, I will be playing this one as much as I'm allowed to. Uh, so we, uh, <coughs> pardon me, we are going to be starting a new game. Settings are fairly basic, straightforward. We can control graphics and other things like that. The music is okay. It's a little bold. Music is amazing, but the volume is a little bold sometimes, so we'll do that. Uh, do take your time in the comments down below, to, or in the description down below, rather, uh, or comments, but you need to hit, you need to go wishlist this if you want the game. Uh, it is available, like I said, for a free demo right now on Steam, so you can grab the demo when this goes live, uh, but it's only on for like a week or so of the free demo and then it'll be back out again once he's uh, had a look and learn on some things So let's uh, let's play a new game here. We have <coughs> three options that will be seem to be available in the future <laughs> And the infamous knight is residing in a castle up north the robber baron I uh, gotta fight him off and eventually you know build up and take on the bad guy in the north the uh, realm conquest is more of a open world seems to be more of an open world where all of the regions and whatnot or various regions are controlled by various uh minor lords and we want to become one of the major versions of that player this is the one available to us so rise to prosperity you're the first lord to settle these lands start from nothing and build a prosperous medieval city <clears throat> so let's do that uh some placeholder names but that's okay uh sir kaduggan 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 there we go something like that I think this guy looks like a, a suitable Sir Kaduggan. Uh We're gonna go ahead and build a fairly straightforward, I think we'll go with that. I had a look at that on the stream. It was a fun stream we did. Uh, you know what, let's go white, uh, blue. Streams on the channel if you're interested. And white and black, and let's choose our sword. You eventually will be able to add your own uh, sigils and whatnot or symbols in here. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to put in our own uh, PNGs uh, later on, which is suggests we can here uh, in this spot and then, you know, do something with that uh, in the future. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll use that. You know what? That's kind of. Uh, let's go blue and white. Yeah, let's go like that. That's I like that. That's all right. Um, but there's options, various different options with the shields, with the uh, coat of arms, I should say, uh, and coloring, and then the, the different symbols. Um, it's a good start to a system. I like the idea that we can custom them. That's going to be pretty beautiful. We can tile things differently. We can adjust the uh, the number of swords, for instance, or the size of them and what uh, the, of the components and whatnot. Uh, pretty fun stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing some new portrait options. Maybe even allowing uh, a bit of a random generator for portraits and whatnot. We'll see what the uh, future has to hold. The game definitely is in very demo beta version. Uh, and he, it says it over and over again. Demo game settings over here. For now, it governs the rain and damage to exposed supplies. It's very early access. So be take it with a grain of salt. Lots is going to change between now and final release. Or at least early access release, if that's the thing he goes with. Um, but again, one man devel development entirely. With the exception of like, thing, like assets like you know sound and stuff like that amazingly done but they were all them deceived oh that's right <laughs> comments about a about a hidden bug that deceived them all all right so here we are we are in a realm that uh, let's spin around this way looks like okay so we have a general oh i see okay so the deposit the map is the same every time the map layout is the same with the rivers and that. In this version, I'm sure there'll be some randomness or some various different options later. But the resources in the particular space is not the same every time. So this time there's two berries here and a hunting patch and a mine uh, deposit. Up here is clay. When we did our live stream, this was a honey one. Okay. More hunting over in Lendorf. 
and that's awesome we can actually click on uh our place by selecting up here that's tech not our place select the name up here our current settlement and we can change the name to uh bumbleberg i don't know <laughs> something like that probably suitable uh and then we'll close that up and that's the name of our of our community so that's actually the now the i guess the county might be what how you name that that's might be the county the manor anyways uh let's keep a pause here for a second uh, i'm gonna give a very like 40 50 second run through uh top right is our actual character and his treasure we can actually go into visit mode <clears throat> and we can wander around like uh like we're in first person mode or third person uh you know survival game sort of mode no we're not punching trees or anything like that it's just the uh layout that we got and uh oh i'm, I'm over here and we're in the wrong place this is this is our province over here okay good this is where our people are we got hunting uh, wild animals up to the left we got some berry deposits here we got iron over the road okay might not be terrible trains modestly oh, let's pause for a second train is modestly flat might be might be buildable decently buildable all right so let's look into things uh top left is the families uh unassigned and assigned families and then population there is a difference um you assign a family by their uh a family unit together to a job so if we have hunters we have miners we have berry gatherers whatever foragers we assign the forager job to a family we add a family to that job and then they'll go out and do the hunting and the, or the foraging or the whatever and they'll also take care of their own things at home uh they use bur uh, burgage plots in this game so they can actually do like sort of cottage industries and such farming and gardening and whatnot and not farming but gardening and small animal uh, taming and that sort of stuff within the within the confines of their own home we'll look at all into all that as we go but population and families are two separate things we got approval we got public order i don't think either of those are going to be a major issue in the demo version we have one livestock it's an oxen we need to find out who our oxen is herman hello herman the herman the ox i think that's herman the ox yeah that's herman it's herman all right uh that's herman the ox welcome Welcome, Herman. Uh, the regional wealth, which I mentioned, is different than our treasury wealth. Our treasury is up here, our character, treasury, and so on. Uh, treasury is money that we've taxed or gathered or uh, acquired from various different uh, things as the manor lord. And uh, and then we have uh, annual taxes we have to pay forward to the to the king and whatnot. Influence is gained, <coughs> pardon me, as we... Uh, um, you know, donate things and, and our population raises and we build new new manor improvements and, and, and expand our territory and so on uh, and increase our development levels. All that will increase our influence, which would allow us to then um, do various different things, including right now we can use them to a thousand points of that eventually will allow us to buy up a neighboring territory. Uh, favor is something handed off to us uh, one point at a time from the king and that's uh, for future us to talk about. Uh, this icon is your food and lumber um, months available. So every month, each person consumes one food. So it doesn't matter if it's a meat, if it's a bread, if it's a berries. It all counts as a food. Um, and so each member, each population will consume one food per month. And during the three months of winter, they'll consume three fuel. The seasons are down here. Speed as uh, icons are down here. We have 1x speed, 4x, and 16. But this is the uh, seasons. We have spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Uh, different things like berries are available. Uh, start regrowing in spring and uh, stop regrowing by autumn, but can be harvested in autumn and not in winter. Uh, firewood is required for survival. Well, they're in winter. I mentioned that. Uh, let's see what else can we say. This is our resources. So, uh, you know, your food, your water, your or food, your fuel, your timber, uh, tools and so on, and materials for you know, flour and wool and all that jazz. Uh, an interesting approach here. There's two different uh, viewpoints of this. We can, it doesn't change anything right now because nothing's assigned. But this arrow is the everything is listed. So if we have eight timber, we have eight timber. This one, if we, it says eight timber, that's eight timber that's available and not assigned anywhere. So if I start, go build a building, which we're going to do in a moment, this will drop the moment we assign it somewhere. So it gives you a, a better idea of what's actually, uh, where you're actually at resource wise. All right, let's look at, I think that covers everything. Down here is our building materials and stuff. The regional map we already looked at. Uh, settings for the game settings and whatnot, or what the game settings are. 
and uh, construction. Oh yes, one other thing over the overlays. So uh, when you hit the construction tab, the overlays appears. I don't know if we can get this as a hotkey somewhere, if I can add this so that I don't have to bring up construction, but anyways, it's here. Uh, shows underground water, so we would need to put a well on, on one of those lines in order to uh, draw water. Emmer is our wheat. And we got flax. These are green, is the more fertile territory for them. Looks like not great flax deposit uh, spots around. Maybe up in the neighbors could do some flax work. Uh, barley, we got a nice uh, spot for barley in the middle here. And rye pretty much everywhere. <clears throat> I'm not sure that one's quite implemented yet. And then the smell. That's for, you know, if you start making... I don't know, nasty, stanky stuff. People probably don't want to live in the smelly area. So that's the overlays. Let's look at the message. <clears throat> Establishing a foothold. There's a fire at the heart of every settlement. A bastion of safety, warmth, and light against the darkness of the world. Uh, this is a cold... Or, sorry, on this cold morning, your men blow on their fingertips, their breath clouding in the air. But there's plenty of work to warm them. As the toil begins, you can also imagine, you can almost imagine you hearing the ring of the uh, ring of the anvils, tolling of the bells, cries in the marketplace, possibilities. In the distance, fog lingers in the hollows of the land, and the world is quiet, watchful, waiting for you to choose which of these to make real. We have four objectives here. We're supposed to build a granary, a logging camp, a foraging hut, and a storehouse. Uh, notably, the foraging hut seems to not be an instruction if you have only um, hunting. If you don't have any berries in the area, it'll ask you to do a hunting thing, I think. That's how that was. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what it does. So we have one year to establish a foothold. Uh, it's us and these uh, fine fellows standing around the spot here. This is a temporary homeless tent spot. I can't move this at this point. That's where they've chosen to plop themselves down. This is the hitching post where our, uh, our Herman goes back to our oxen. Uh, where's our supplies? Looks like... Oh, it looks like the supplies have stacked on top of each other. These are two separate supply spots. One's logs and one's supplies. All right, that's fine. Uh, so anyways, we'll uh, we'll let those get those uh, stuff shuffled out, and all those are temporary. We can shuffle the uh, hitching post. So we can settle anywhere we really want to at this point. Let's look at what we might want to do. I imagine everything's going to want to be connected to this road. We have uh, with a clay deposit to the north. That's interesting. Do we have iron? We do have iron over on the right here. Okay. This is a, like, King's Road sort of thing, so we can go out here to trade with the those outside of our area. What's the terrain topography like? We got a drop down back there. This is pretty high, and it slopes down to the, the southwest here. Okay. I'm thinking we'll probably have some living quarters mostly along this road or perhaps stuck around the trees or something. Um, this section through here is probably going to be in the way. We'll probably end up chopping it up. So our first objectives are the granary, logging camp, foraging hut, and storehouse. I think the storehouse and the granary are fairly stationary. The logging camp we might be able to move. I'm not sure about the foraging hut. So this is the foraging hut. It collects berries from the berry deposits. Can be relocated. Oh, it says it right there. Aha. Can be relocated. That one can be relocated. The logging camp as well. Woodcutters can. And the forester's hut can. Cool. What about the storage? Uh, doesn't say that for the granary or the storehouse. Pitching post does. So I imagine the granary and the storehouse, we got to kind of pick where we're going to have things and leave it there. So if we're hunting up here, we don't want to forest that area. So maybe our forester can be somewhere up in this area. Yeah, I think that's okay. So let's go over to our gathering and find our logging camp first. <clears throat> We're going to have them log out sort of this area first and then over here. Let's find just the uh, the checkbox here. Uh, the, yeah, this little checkbox is a little hard to see. Snap to road. If I shut that off, it won't automatically. And then I can hold left mouse button to spin them into the spot I want. Place it close to a road. There's actually, this one doesn't have specific... Or does it? Yeah, there it is. You just got to zoom in. Those little dots have to connect to a road, or you have to drag a new road from the road to that circle. Uh, that's the access points for the building. But anyways, I do want the Snap 2 on for now. We can Again, we can move these. So if I move it into a space that it's going to damage tree or take out trees, it'll say that. I think if you uh, knock down those trees, your logging crew just comes and takes care of them. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. So we'll do that. We'll put in... Uh, 
that one there. I think we'll put in a hunter over here. And uh, let's put in our... Put in our foragers over... Well, I mean, the forge... The berries are way down here, but I don't really want things to be six miles away from each other at the start. So we'll just go there. Uproot a tree in the process. Now, it, it disappeared. I've seen them actually knock down trees for stuff, and and they've gone and chopped them down, it seems. But maybe I'm wrong on that. So we got our forager and our hunting camp in there. Uh, we don't need the woodcutters yet. We do need the storage. So, granary. If we're going to have, like, a... Uh, <clears throat> we're going to have housing out in this area, generally speaking. Or maybe along the roads, I'm not sure. Might be a little bit of an organic build here. Uh, I'm going to bring speed up while these guys get to work. So you can see Herman being uh, led by whoever this is, Linhart. Um, Herman is uh, hauling over the uh, logs. The actual, this timber resource up there. Ah, yes, see now that's showing four. If I click this button, there's actually still eight because it's not actually been built yet. Look at them go. Look at them go. Crazy. So efficient. Uh, we do have our hunting camp almost finished. Good transports. Really? Wait, what does it need? Nothing. Okay. There's our second log coming in. So it needed two. There we go. Now they got the supplies to make that. So you definitely do not want to. Oops. Smart. You do not want to wait on own. your Old logging town. camp. If the if you have no logging camp and you have no timber left, you're done. You can't get it at this point. There's no other way to get it. So. Uh, right now, one of the biggest uh, downsides is going to be that this supplies right here is going to be uh, way far away from where we're working. So I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to stick uh, Herman over here beside uh, that stuff for now. That's fine. I just relocated his, his spot. He'll do the th same thing he was doing before because he's being led around doing his uh, gathering. That would be going over to where? the foraging hut yep probably there we go we can select any building or whatnot and it'll indicate who's involved in it see we got some workers going there uh so idle uh unassigned families will uh spend their time entirely on things like construction if you select a idle enable idle labors there i think it's yellow is the job you need there then somebody will come and do the work if it's urgent and there's somebody available. But we do want our loggers specifically to be on there. So we're going to go ahead and give one job to the logging camp. I'm going to bring it up to like super speed. Try to progress things a little bit here. We don't have an unlimited amount of time to do things. So the uh, hunting camp is finished. We're going to put on a person there. The there's something worth talking about here. Uh, these, This is one of the buildings that can have an, an assigned work area. So I could click this and tell them only hunt in this area. Well, it would need to be over here, obviously. Uh, but you can also hold control and, uh, and scroll mouse to switch the uh, work area. Pretty big. Uh, the option, though, and this is nice. I'm going to clear the work area entirely. Let them work wherever they want. But the hunting limit is set to 20. So that uh, tells them that the herd size. Now, that's more important for, like, yesterday's stream because there was uh, there was three of these in our in our. Uh, in our county or in our whatever, in our manor, in our borders, um, there were three animal plots. So they were able to go to various different ones. But there's 33 animals here. With that setting the way it, it is, they will try not to drop the population below 20. That way we can maintain it more long term. But again, that's not going to be enough food for all our people. But it will get us food, some food and pelts. Which will be great for making uh, one of our clothing options. Forgers are going to get us our berries, and that is going to get started real darn soon. <clears throat> now, I think I might want... Let's look at our fertility again. Do we have any, like, growing... We can farm down here for grain. Flax not just about anywhere. Barley we can farm in here, by the mine even. Rye is not a big deal. Flax. And no good spots for flax, eh? Like, no, well, there's some down here by the berries. Yikes. Okay. So I think this will be our... Our... Central town-ish area. Maybe, let's see. There's a sort of a hill thing going on here. What if we were to... How are we going to do this housing? Back some houses onto these 
This forest, maybe. Oh, there's a merchant going by. Hello, merchant friend. Um, what I'm going to do is find our housing. That's going to be in here. Uh, any of these build... Well, it's there. It's going to explain this. On flexible spot... Uh, Flexible plots. Blah, can't talk today. This icon just tells us that we can <clears throat> we can mark out the territory that the object's going to be. Ah, that's going to matter. We're going to have the well in here somewhere. Okay. It's probably close to here. And the granary not far from there. That's not a bad idea. Maybe it'll be down here more. I'm not sure. We'll see. I think we'll put some... Oh, I think we'll put some housing and a backing onto this. So if we do houses... We need like five of them. We don't have the housing, the space for it, but if we start a, the first two spots determine the default position of your the front of your building. So what's hold on, let's say we Let's say we have a road. Ah uh, yes, the roads and the curvature of the roads. So let's go like this. And we'll have a road come past this place. We just keep building. And uh, I want to kind of start curving it like this. So notice how I can bend it and curve, or I can hold control and change the curvature. So it forces them into some bizarre, more curvy spots. I want a very gradual curve here. So we're going to do something like this. For now. Sure. Just a... Just a Show the option of what we can do with a, <clears throat> a little bit of a sample of what we can do with stuff. I'm going to leave that space available, probably for like maybe, I don't know, maybe our manor house ends up in there. Uh, but let's start with a housing spot. So let's assign uh, the first two clicks. You notice how it'll naturally try to bend to the road, which is why I wanted that road down first. If we were wanting to do this, we could go like this. And then we could, uh, you know, have houses spread along here, for instance. Uh, I unfortunately can't. Ah, uh, I see. So I can't, but I'd have to have a road on the other side too in order to make them bend. Which you could temporarily build a road along the back. Uh, but this is telling me that we don't have the 10 logs for this, which is fine because it's two per plot. But notice how some of them have the, the little, uh, the little cross, the little X whatever at the end. Um, if you stretch it, big, the plot, plot big enough. It has extra space for extension, so that is where you would put your little vegetable gardens or your chicken coops and that sort of stuff as an added uh, job for the houses. So that's what I wanted to show off. So let's uh, let's start by going like this. We'll have a couple, maybe not even that far. We'll go like this. See if we can get two really deep plots here. Not hey, a little further. How about one more tick there? How about we go like this? Aha! That's going to give us two two plots. I wonder. Wouldn't be a bad idea to try that road thing. I haven't, haven't done that before. I just kind of had that thought as I went. So why don't we do this? And put a temporary, like, road along the edge of this forest. Aha! Now will it stick to both? I, I hope so. Eat. Uh, I want it to I'm gonna leave this space available. Maybe we go like this. Hmm. And then wide enough to fit the front of the house like that. Oh, look, it does. It'll curve it to it. Nice. Aha. Okay, I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> there we go. We used up some of our logs. Now, we have five. We have only one available right now because we just assigned four of those. But we still have five logs. But anyways, so this guy is uh, is building. That's cool. I like that. A little, little bit of fiddling and learning. Notice how it thickens up out front of the house. So this is like the front, front yard, basically. Cool. It's like the more assumed to be a more traveled space, I guess. <clears throat> All right. He's going off to deliver some more logs. Looks like he's taken one from the logging camp. They must have already produced one. That's great. We do have some more down here, which we want to take care of. But we have to put in our uh, other things, which is the granary and the storehouse. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a storehouse maybe right in here and the granary right across from it. That might be a decent, reasonably organic start start for things. Uh, not enough resources to build this. Oh, what? That one says not enough. Oh, you know, because 
at this point, it's not telling me that because I'm trying to overlay something else. So we need some more logs. So let's uh, buzz along and let our uh, logging camp get doing this thing. Another merchant wandering by, seeing the new developments. Look at them build this. This is great. Oh, logs being delivered for the other one, too. So the other thing, the uh, oh, we'll see him right now. Look, there he goes. He is uh, taking the ox around through the forest to deliver the tree that was there was a tree chopped down. Oh, we didn't give this guy jobs or oh, a, a, de a, a designation as to where he's going to work. So we're going to do this first. I want like big, big, big area, big, big, big area like this. I know it's like really weird that I'm going to use that space, but actually we could. No, we'll leave that. No, we'll we'll eliminate it. It's kind of like that to the edge of the road. I like that. So that's the area he will prefer to log from, which is awesome. Now, one of the things that's going to be a massive bottleneck is the the movement of of materials by this ox. The other is having enough materials. I'm going to go ahead and add one Let's more get person. To work. It will do. One more person to log in camp because we still need to get some supplies for the storehouse. Two more logs for that. Two more logs for the... Two more timber for the storehouse and two more timber for the granary. Let's speed things along here. I'm going to probably have about 30-ish minutes on an episode and uh, they'll just be a straight playthrough. I'm not going to be doing a big edit here. This is only available for the for the time that the beta is available and I have even less time than that. See, look, he just ran into the forest to pick up another log and he... Plops them back there. That means there's nothing for him to do right now. So the other goods are delivered here in this Burgage plot. We have three timber available. Now four. Good. Okay. Uh, no water access. Okay. Build a town square or a water vein on a water vein. Now town square is not exactly what we're building, but we are building a water well. Let's see. <clears throat> Where is that again? Um, not mining. It's in here somewhere. I know it is. In the farming? Uh, no. Village life? Yes, right there. The well, I missed it. Okay, so this is, like, not gonna work. Must be on a water vein. So we actually have to put it on top of, like, these this blue stuff here, which is awesome. I think we'll put our storehouse probably here, our well here, and our granary here. So let's before we put the well in, let's place the storehouse so we don't run out of space. Now I don't I don't know. I think I want it to tag to this road here, not our road. Well No, I'm okay with that. Let's pop it right down there. Get to work, lads. And then the granary can go over on this side. Boop. And then we'll put the well in. On this spot, nice. That'll work. Uh, not enough resource. Oh, we don't have the. Uh, we don't. We don't have the supplies. That's fine. <clears throat> Speed up, boys. Quick, quick. Get things done. Look at them. A beautiful foundation. Slightly different than the other building. I like that. With a little variety to them. Not a ton, but a little. Now we also have. Uh, we have food issues. Uh, potential food issues. So I'm going to start looking at these burgage plots right away. There is something that we need to do. Um, basically, we need to eventually upgrade these burgage slots. We need one of these for every family in the village. Or, I should say, this provides housing for a family. There's other ways to get housing, but this is the primary. And it provides housing for the for the family. Um, we can construct an extension, because we left that plus space at the back. Um, we can get currently the v available... Now, I don't know if this is because we haven't you know, do, done new tech or opened up new ideas, but... This is what developed the cottage industry. The basics of the Industrial Revolution came from uh, at-home industrial work that was done up scaling as technology went up. So, I mean, you might have your gardens and your chicken coops and whatnot, but eventually you might have somebody that was that was actually, you know, doing um, pottery at their home or or that sort of stuff where they started developing sort of the uh, your local uh, shops that they just did them in their house or in the front or in the backyard or whatever or their bottom floor sort of thing but all that techs up as the game goes but we can do a vegetable garden now that would use our first our use up our tool we could do that i think we'll go ahead and do that for uh for get our yields going it is april so that'll get us some vegetables this year there we go and uh they'll they'll use that space uh, to plant these lovely gardens i like it oh and the the logs look there's definitely a log sitting there. 
and a tree knocked down a tree or two knocked down there so this stuff should have the loggers loggers the what are these guys referred to as woodcutters <clears throat> the woodcutters should go look into that eh yeah, there they are. They're just chomping away at these trees that were felled for the work in the backyard. So sometimes <clears throat> that material is not lost, but it looks like if we place like a building like this and plop it down on top of it, it might take it out. I don't know. How many timbers do we have available? Zero. A whopping zero right now. Where's Herman? Herman? Where you at, bro? Oh, there you are. Herman's getting the last... Oh, there we go. The last log removed from the uh, supplies. So this is firewood and bread. <clears throat> we don't want that wrecked by spring rains. It's being gracious to us right now. We have exposed food and exposed storage, but the storage is just the firewood right now. So no problems there. We don't have water access. We will get that as soon as we have the next law timber available. Looks like Herman's on his way to uh, into... Who, whose house is this? Thoman's house. Pick up the logs. There we go. He'll hit the nearest road. It'll work for him anyways. I'm going to go ahead and take this, and we'll take it to there, and we'll plop it in here. There we go. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. That might all change. I might move this logging camp, and I like the idea of the manor actually being there. That would be cool. Overlooking the everything to the north, so it's like the front defense line. That'd be cool. Oh my goodness, the views are intense. We get down by the river here. Oh, yeah. Well, let, let's hold on. Let's... uh. Let's hit this button. And we appear, I think, right down by the river, don't we? Well, that's that's the way up to our home. Let's go to the, let's go for a walk to the river. It's pretty pretty fantastic. I thought there was a river here. I think that's the way up to our home. Yes. Oh, can I even get up this hill? Ah, there's the river. Lovely. Hop in. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we did say it's a work in progress, right? <laughs> Alright, let's, let's hop out of there. I don't know what you're talking about. I totally didn't just go drown myself. Uh, but that's our terrain. Look at that. Look at that cliff line. That's a formidable front line, huh? Alright, how's things going in the village? <clears throat> so today, I want to finish off that granary and the storehouse uh, right away and... So let's let's keep speed uh, speeding along here. Get some work done. The loggers are taking more logs out. That's good. We do have some logs available now. <clears throat> we can go ahead and construct or at least uh, assign the uh, location for this. Well, I think that's fine there. Get to work, lads. That's great. Eventually, we can move some other things around if we need to, but that's all right for now. <clears throat> oh, work has begun on the storehouse. That's excellent. Supplies have been delivered. This one has its supplies delivered. And the well now has its supplies delivered. And Herman's having a nice, a well-deserved break. Excellent. So there's just random, like, backyard stuff for now. They have a useless backyard here, but this one uh, will eventually be able to, if there's family moved in there, They'll eventually be able to uh, start farming there, but uh, Thoman is quite busy at the moment. What does Thoman do? Thoman's a woodcutter, so he's not spending his time. He's right there. He's not spending his time uh, dabbling with with garden work. But I just wanted to showcase that is the uh, the backyard uh, industry. More deliveries done. Oh, there's the storehouse. Okay, so now the storehouse is actually having its logs delivered to it. So he takes the logs that were chopped down by the by the loggers. They'll deliver them here, and then he gets another queue to go drop them off at the storehouse. There you go. <clears throat> it's just, uh, because the job, the logs are, are chopped down in the forest and brought back from the log the forest, not by some dude who can throw a tree on his shoulder, which I think is a nice feature. And it's, uh, it's a distinct bottleneck to the system to have those, uh, to have those, um, those oxen being a, a vitally important thing. Look at that, though. Look at the sceneries. A house on a hill, huh? That's impressive. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. The road leading off into the future. <laughs> oh, such a cinematic, beautiful place. Uh, what was it? Control and C for cinematic? Yeah, look at that. That's our village, guys. That's it right there. Ah, oh, so beautiful. 
So beautiful. Oh, or I can click off the screen because my mouse isn't there. Wonderful. Well, that's where we're going to leave it for today. If you did enjoy any of this, uh, please do hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, we got a lot of content on City Builders and the like in the game. Um, uh, do do take time to look at that if you'd like to. Uh, I'd appreciate it. And if not, um, pop in for the next episode and you might enjoy it as well. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Have yourselves a great rest of the day. We'll see you in game.